Hello, friends. Happy Tuesday to you. If you're joining me on the replay, happy replay day to you as well. It's so wonderful to be here with you. Another very busy week. We're live here, and I'm excited to welcome you to today's live Level Up conversation. Welcome to Level Up with Ready Sun. Market Updates. Financial Pro. Get ready. I present to you Level Up with Winnie Sun. Hello, hello, friends. I'm seeing so many people joining us today. Thank you so much. It's such a treat to have you here. I'm seeing Brian Schumann joining us on LinkedIn Live. Hello, my friend. It's great to have you here. I see Modern Mom. I see Cross X Fighter on YouTube Live. Vicky joining us from Facebook Live. We have so many guests. Thank you so much for being here once again. Always a treat to spend the time with you. Hello, friends. I'm Winnie Sun, your host, Forbes contributor, CNBC council member, and award-winning financial pro here to keep you on top of relevant trending business news. And what makes it really special is that you are part of today's discussion. So I'm seeing you, I'm seeing your comments, and I welcome you to the show. We'll be sharing audience feedback during our community moments. What a treat. What a treat to spend some time with you. And I want to welcome you back because we have a very special friend and guest with us today. You are in for a treat. You know, I gotta say, I probably have been following her on social media for more than she knows. And, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but she is someone I've wanted to have on the show for quite some time. She's one of the Forbes top 25 networking experts and MG100 coach. I don't know exactly what that is. We're going to have to ask her. And then she's the author of four books, including the internationally known The 11 Laws of Likeability. Hopefully we just have one of those, right? One law of likeability would be great. And her latest is the connector's advantage. We are in for a treat. I can't wait to talk to her, meet her, and ask her all sorts of questions on your behalf. And of course, if you have questions throughout the show, definitely don't be shy. Let me know, and I'll try to jump in on those as well. But before we jump to her, here's how the market closed today. Now, you know, it was sort of an interesting day because if you were following financial news much of today, it was actually relatively negative through across the board. But as we got to the last hour, well, the Dow was just sort of holding on to positive territory. And I was wondering the last five minutes how the outcome would be. Well, the good news is the Dow closed up 48 points. So it held on a little bit there. For Unfortunately, the NASDAQ closed down 270 points and the S&P 500 rounded that down also 32 points. Now, as you know, the Dow and the S&P are now headed, unfortunately, to the worst start um, of the year since 1970. And certainly we saw quite a bit movement in technology. Now, if you've been watching the news recently, you know, there's been quite a bit of bad news lately, right? In fact, those of you um, who are on social media and joining me today, if you're invested in social media, you're probably feeling that pain as well. Now you probably aren't feeling as much pain as Elon Musk though, because today, uh, Twitter stock unfortunately fell below the price that he first purchased, turning that like bit of uh, profit that he had, I say bit, but it was all over a billion dollars of profit, now into a $40 million uh, plus loss now. So sorry, Elon, but hopefully better days are coming for you in the future. Now also, Snap CEO Evan Spiegel also warned uh, in a note that he sent over to his employees that unfortunately, it looks like Snap is also having trouble there setting in really difficult and unfortunate news across the digital advertising space. This industry continues to see pressure and analysts are saying that this is probably not specific just to these individual companies, but that this could be a bigger macroeconomic trend that we might be seeing going forward. In fact, those of you who follow me on Twitter may have seen, I shared a tweet earlier today that, well, we pay for 
a phone service. We pay for streaming. We pay for Zoom. And I think soon we'll be paying for social media. So whether you agree or disagree, do know, jump on Twitter. Let me know your thoughts on that because I'd love to hear from you. Now, tomorrow also marks the 100th trading day of 2022. Now, as you know, this year, you're probably going to remember it as a war in Ukraine. The year Starbucks and McDonald's left Russia. And of course, the lingering pandemic and the historic market volatility that we are experiencing today. So let's see what happens tomorrow, but I will just say I think volatility is here to stay at least not only for the next week, but probably for the coming week. So, you know, stay close. We'll continue to update you as we have more information. But today, today's a good day because I'm joined by Michelle Tillis, Tillis Letterman, one of Forbes' top 25 networking experts and MG100 coach. Michelle, how are you? I am great. I'm so excited to be with you. And I know I'm sorry you said you've been waiting a while, but we made it happen. We made it happen and you are worth the wait for sure, yeah. my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Um, first off, you know, we I joked about this earlier, but I need to know what is MG100? What is this? So Marshall Goldsmith, who is one of the Thinkers 50 number one leadership coaches in the world, author of God knows how many best-selling books, including Triggers and What Got You Here Won't Get You There, and his latest that just came out as bestseller, The Earned Life, created a community of leaders, authors, um, coaches, thought uh thought leaders in, in the world and brought them together to pay it forward and to try to have an impact in the world. And it is an amazing community to be a part of. Wow. It sounds like quite an honor. I know you're definitely the, you're a connection creator and CEO of Executive Essentials, which provides customized communication and leadership programs for the Fortune 500 nonprofit university government clients. You're a busy, busy person. Okay. And not, not to mention, we've seen you on NBC, CBS, Fox, NPR, um, my favorite Wall Street Journal, New York Times, CNBC. I got to give it up for CNBC and so many others. And, you know, you have a great reputation. I, I subscribe to your newsletter, which I love. And I know that before we got on air, I was just telling you, I love your newsletter because it's like from the first character to the last character, it's quality across the board. And it shows because I just learned that, you you know, that is your weekly baby that you start from beginning to end. So thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us today. I, I, I will tell you, I want to learn the backstory. I may follow you on social media. You have a very, very substantial uh, catalog of books that we're going to talk about. But how did you start, Michelle? Where did this all begin? I, I love the uh, the origin story. And, you know, you're right. Um my content has to be my voice. And that's part of what my origin story is about is that authenticity of feeling like I'm having a conversation with a friend. And that's how I want any of the people who are interacting with me to feel because it's not how I felt back in my finance days, which is kind of how I started. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us, um, we make decisions as an anecdote to something that's been missing in our lives. And for me growing up, there was a lot of um, scarcity around the finances. So I made a decision to go into finance because I wanted financial security. And I spent the first decade of my career uh, as one of the only women on the trading floor. I did auditing, mergers and acquisitions, uh, consulting. I tried everything in that area. And now I'm dating myself a little here, but this is early 90s when I wasn't allowed to have red nail polish. I wasn't allowed to wear pants. And I was one of the few women in that environment and I was really frustrated by how people communicated, how they led, and that's how the work began. I began while I worked on the trading floor, and I said to the to the treasurer who became the CEO that um, I could do what I hired somebody else to do, which was coach his team. And he said, "Okay, but you still have to do everything else." And I said, "Okay." Um, and so that's kind of how I found my calling was doing the work while also still doing all of the other work. And so for all those people out there who are thinking that there is something that they are, you know, called to do, um, there's a way to do that, uh, you know, and, and not feel like you're jumping off a cliff. So that's kind of how I got my start. I believed that I could. And so I did. 
I believe that I could, and thus I did. I love that. And you were doing two jobs at once. You were doing your job, and you were also out there helping. I was actually you- doing more than two jobs at once. <laughs> I was working full time in finance. So at the beginning of two thousand and five, I started the transition in two thousand and one. But I'm, uh, you know, this is a financial show. I'm not, uh, you know. Uh, I might be risk averse in term, I mean, risk taker in terms of jumping out of a plane and swimming with sharks, but I'm risk averse when it comes to finances. So um, I kind of treaded both both worlds while I built the business on the side. So I was an adjunct professor at NYU's business school. I was putting my husband through business school himself. I was full time in finance and I was building my business on the side um, all at the same time. <laughs> That's incredible. And so many of us who are listening to this and you're thinking, I'm tired. Well, I, I wonder how Michelle did it. I mean, I guess you just decide that you can and you should and therefore you do, right? Let's talk about the the connector's advantage. I want to talk to you about this book. What was insp- inspiration behind this? And tell us, tell us. We want to hear about it. So the connector's advantage is actually a follow-up to the 11 Laws of Likeability, which was my first book. And my brother-in-law walks into my office one day and he says, oh, you're writing another networking book. And I said, no, 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 no. This one's about being a connector. Thinking, you know, this is very different in my head. And he's like, well, what's the difference? And I said, well, that's a really great question. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, you know what? Networking is something that you do. We tend to network for need, network for now. And it has the word work in it. People kind of have a visceral response to this word networking. And I did as well. I didn't even want it in the title of the book. But connector, that's who you are. That's something you're being. And that's the shift I really wanted people to make. And so um, that that was, my husband's like, why are you writing another book? <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's a painful process. It took me more to birth my first book than both my kids put together. Mm-hmm. And I said, because I have something I have to say. And that shut him right up because he's like, that's a really good reason. And I really believe that there is an advantage to thinking and prioritizing relationships in everything that you do, whatever it is you're working on out there, whether it's the promotion, the partnership, the referral, the the new job, even your health and happiness, you are gonna get there faster, easier, and better as a connector. And that's what the connector's advantage is. So when you think about results, when you think about um, anything, think about the people who helped you get there and you will realize you are already implementing this philosophy in your success. I love that. Well, you know, Michelle, I think sometimes when we think of words like networking and connecting and being in a connector, you know, people will say like, well, that's not really me. That's not really in my DNA. And then there's others where it seems to come very naturally. What do you say to that? So this is often the introvert extrovert uh, dilemma. And I want to say to all the introverts out there, you are some of the best connectors I know. You bring some natural strengths to connecting that extroverts don't. And don't worry, extroverts, I got you covered too. Um, Introverts, you are better in the one-on-one. And that's really where true connection forms. You are excellent listeners. You know how to probe and make somebody feel heard and listened to. And who doesn't love that feeling? And also, you're not off-putting, right? And as an extrovert, I have been told I might be a bit much at times, um, even from my now husband. So, uh, but but don't get me wrong, extroverts bring other strengths to the table. They can put people at ease. They can start and keep a conversation going with just about anyone, anywhere. Um, and they're willing to share and provide information about themselves to enable somebody to, to see more about who they are. So, when you understand what your natural strengths are in connection, you understand what your stretch is. So for those extroverts, I want you to stretch yourself by being willing to share a little bit more. When you ask a question, which you're so great at, I want you also to sprinkle in a little information about you and be willing to answer that question as well. Think of it as a little dance, a little give and take. Whereas the extroverts, where you need to stretch yourself is maybe a little bit more listening, talking second, and making sure you take that breath to let somebody else jump in. And I'll do that right now so that Winnie can jump back in. 
<laughs> I love that. It's so important. And I think especially now, and you know, we've now been in the pandemic for a couple of years. I think a lot of people feel like they've maybe lost some of those connections. And I think every one of us can actually relate to that, right? Uh, surely we're not seeing everybody that we used to see in 2019 as often as we did before. So is there a technique that you would say for those of you who feel like maybe you're a little rusty and maybe you want to connect with somebody else and you just don't know how to do that? Do you have any tips? There is no right or wrong way to connect or to reach out. Um, you know, and I have little habits. And what I would say is I want you to build your own little habits around how do I stay connected to the people who are important to me? It doesn't have to be at a certain time frame. I have one person who's been a mentor to me for God knows, going on 15 plus years, 16 years. I think I met him when I was pregnant with my first, um, which is also when I told you about those four jobs I had at the same time. One of those jobs was also kind of cooking my first child because um, <laughs> I wasn't busy enough, right? Um, so one of my habits is if somebody comes into my mind, I put their name in my calendar because what happens is if somebody pops into your mind and they pop back out, you don't do anything about it. But if you drop their name into your calendar in some way, then your calendar reminds you of that person and you can drop them a little note, a text, go to their social media and put a comment, just kind of keeping that um, connection point, uh, letting them know you're thinking about them. It could be something as simple as you just popped into my head, give me an update, what's been going on, how you doing? I actually think that the pandemic gave people more reason to reach out because that's one of the most common excuses I hear for not reaching out is I don't, I don't have any reason and I don't want to bother them. But knowing that I'm being thought of and that somebody's making an effort, even a small way of reaching out, it makes you feel valued and important and cared for. And so that is all you need to do is a light touch is what I call it. Don't require anything in return, but put that light touch and so you stay in their mind. That's one of my favorite easy anybody can do habits to stay connected. I love that. So important. And I think nowadays with tools, Michelle, there's a lot of things that can actually help you. In fact, I remember one of the best connectors um, of that I know of is my mom. And I remember as a kid, every holiday, whether it be, you know, New Year's Day or Mother's Day or Father's Day, it didn't matter the day. But I remember she would plop herself on the sofa and literally she would pick up her phone and she had back then, you know, her, her phone book or address book was actually, you know, everything was written and she would go down the line and she would call every single friend. And I remember she did that every single holiday. And, you know, she was actually in real estate and she never had to prospect. And it was because she was calling her friends and just asking them how they were doing. And then things would, you know, trickle naturally. And then she would find out that they had a home to rent or a home to buy. And it was just happened. And I thought, how powerful is that for something so consistent? Like you said, I thought of you. She really went through the phone book, but there's tools out there, right? That can help with this. I mean, that is exactly the connector's advantage at play. What she was doing, it was just showing that you care and, and keeping those relationships going over time. Um, I, I love that habit. Um, there are so many different ways that you can think about um, how you support your network and how you stay in touch. Um, I like to think of the three I's, invitations, information, and introductions. And a connector, so we're talking about the connector's advantage and there's seven mindsets. I'm just gonna lay them out and then you can tell me which ones you want me to dive into. But um, the one we're talking about right now is generous spirit, but connectors are open and accepting. They have a clear vision. They trust. They come from a place of abundance. They're social and curious. They're conscientious and they have a generous spirit. And that's what your mother was doing is um, she was seeing what people were up to, what they needed, how she could add value, um, just being that resource for them and understanding that these mindsets and these attributes of how you think, they're not linear. It's not like I do one and then I do the next. They all enable each other. It's really hard to have a generous spirit if you don't have a mindset of abundance. It's very hard to be conscientious and set those boundaries if you're not having a generous spirit with yourself and clarity on what you should and should not say yes to. Um, you know, yes and no, I always say should never be one word answers. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. So true. And I think I'm glad that you said both yes and no, because so many times we feel like to be a generous spirit, we need to continue to say yes, but actually that's not always true. We need to be able to train and, and practice saying no as well. I want to say hello and welcome to so many of our friends joining us today as well. Take a moment just to say hello to Sadiq joining us on YouTube live and flip flops needed on YouTube live as well. Brigetti from Facebook live. If you have a question for Michelle, do let us know. I'm happy to share. But Michelle, I, I actually have so many questions for you. You know, I've always thought that um, people are sort of born either good at networking or not, connecting or not. But you're saying that uh, that's not necessarily the, the case, right? Some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts, and yet we all have that sort of talent. But maybe we just, do you think it's fear sometimes that's preventing people from connecting more? It, you know, it's so interesting that you said that because I actually thought the same thing when I started my research in this book. I thought that there was certain, you know, ways that we're, we are just wired. And when I did the research, I found that there was very little differentiation between the attributes of a connector and a non-connector with one major exception. The satisfaction that one gets from making the connection was 60 times higher in a connector versus a non-connector. But what it told me and what it shifted the entire content of the book was that anybody can be a connector. You are not necessarily born this way. You might be born introvert or extrovert, but that doesn't mean you're born connector or non-connector. And by the way, there's a connector spectrum and you can level up, pun intended, mm -hmm. uh, where you lie on that connector spectrum uh, to, to enhance by pulling different levers. So first I wanna say that no, you, you are not just born this way and it's not necessarily a natural gift. It can be learned and anybody can be a connector. And there's two levers that I want people to have to understand how to get from a emerging connector to a responsive connector to an acting connector and continue to level up until you get to where you target. And by the way, not everybody needs to be a global super connector. <laughs> But the first level lever I want people to pull is the initiation versus response lever, right? So a lot of times people will ask us for things and we respond. That's wonderful. We will respond to that request for help. We will respond to that request for an introduction. You are a responsive connector and that's a great start. If you want to get to the app connector, you need to start to initiate. I want you to start to think when you're in a conversation with somebody, what is it that they're working on? Who might I know that they would want to connect with or what events are coming up that I'm aware of that they, even if I'm not going, that they might want to go to? How can I add value to them, whether it is simply through um, appreciation or acknowledgement or credit? A thank you goes such a long way and thank you is always a gift. I mean, Winnie, when you came on and you said that you've been following me for a while, to me, that was a gift you gave me in feeling that my words had impact. So thank you for that. So that's the first lever. The second lever is the breadth and depth. So if you wanna get beyond acting connector, which is again, a great place to be, and there's a quiz that we'll put in the show notes for you that you can find out where you are right now, you wanna go either deep and or broad. So when you go deep, that's, you know, everybody in an industry, in a job function, in a geography, uh, that's a niche connector. My sister is the perfect example of this. She knows everybody in New Jersey real estate law. She's not a lawyer, by the way, but she knows everybody and they know her. So that's deep. When we go broad and we go across uh, demographics, geographics, function, hierarchy, um, industry, education level, all those things, that's when we are a super connector. It's it's when you go, oh, they know somebody. I know she's she's going to know somebody. If she doesn't, she's going to know somebody who knows somebody. That whole six degrees of, of Kevin Bacon. Um, <laughs> that's really what a connector is, is getting to that result, that information, that, that uh, content, contact, or whatever it might be that you need, personal or professional, faster, easier, and better. Faster, easier, and better. We like those words, Michelle, for sure. Let me ask you this. You know, we've always learned and heard, I'm sure those of you uh, who run businesses or maybe you're working in a large organization today, how important it is today now, instead of just doing great business and being great at your job, but there's also a big element of getting the word out of what you do, right? So, so many 
uh, industries and companies and entities know that you really need to make sure that you have a social network and you need to have maybe a database, maybe an email list. You need to have people who will follow your work and help you spread the, the language of your work and, and share, you know, the get the word out of what you do. And there's also a saying that, you know, you have true influence when you have a hundred people in your life who, when you contact or reach out to them, that they will drive an hour to come see you at, at a drop of a dime. So talk to me about this, Michelle. Um, we're all, we all know that we need to have, you know, social media presence, right? We need to focus on sharing good content and making new connections. But how does someone actually maintain that larger network? I mean, one of my clients has over 30 million subscribers on YouTube. How in the world can you keep these connections to being really meaningful and and, and something that's helpful for you long term? So the reality is 30 million, you're not going to keep all of those connections close. But that doesn't mean that you can't stay in their mind. And you know, you asked, we talked earlier about some habits. So let me give you one more, because when you think about um, the overwhelm of how many contacts you need to, you know, keep in touch with, we start to feel like it's it's not possible. There's not enough time in the day. So I often talk about underutilized time, not unused time, right? Because downtime is key. It's important. That is actually being used to sharpen the saw, to regenerate, but underutilized time. And that's those times when you might be in a car driving somewhere that you could be doing something. Um, another, another habit of mine is invite somebody to do whatever I already have to do, whether it is getting my nails done. I have had many a new meeting getting my nails done. I love it. Um, taking dogs for a walk, uh, post gym, sweaty breakfast. Um, so thinking about those times that you can multitask, I've now taken, I do a morning walk every morning. I've been on a weight loss journey for the last year because everybody put on the weight during COVID. And so every morning I walk about four or five miles and I'll put my AirPods in and I'll have a conversation with somebody on my walk. And so I can connect to somebody every day. Um, I'll also tell you that the most, um, or I should say the least productive time of the work week is Fridays from four to 5 p.m. So your mother did it on the holiday. You can say every Friday or one Friday a month from 4 to 5 p.m., that's going to be my reach out day. And just make a habit of I'm not going to do any other real work at that time of the day because I'm just waiting for the weekend. So let me use that for connection time. So these are all ways that we can think about maintaining where we're not feeling like it's draining. I love it. That's so important and so, it's super easy. We just set the time block, right? Put in our schedule and figure out and, and get in the habit of reconnecting. You know, um, for those of you know me, I've talked about this in the past. If I am actually a, a, a true, very extreme introvert. I know, Michelle, you had talked about how introverts, we can get around this as well. Um, talking about large gatherings, this is absolutely the thing I don't like to do. I don't mind speaking in front of an audience of 30,000, but I cannot stand cocktail parties. It's just not my thing. I don't know where to stand. I don't know when do I talk? When do, if you leave, do I just stand? Do I follow? Like, it's very, very stressful. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking some of you may feel this way as well. If you're not comfortable with traditional networking events, I certainly don't like those meetup meetings either. Um, how can people build more connections and grow their, their, their communities, if you will, uh, without, without attending these really large events? I know this is a question that has been asked several times. So I want to make sure to get your feedback. So I'm going to get, I'm going to answer it in two ways. One, because I, I believe that when I talk about the mindset of being social and curious, I'm not talking about a social butterfly. I'm not talking about life of the party. I'm talking about putting yourself in a position to be social and curious about one other person. So first of all, I want everyone to exhale when you feel the anxiety over going to those events. The second thing I'll say is I also want people to find their format in how they want to be social. Some people are better on social media. Some people are better on live events. Some people like Zoom, chat, you know, whatever it might be. That's great. And stretch yourself at the same time. So you don't have to go to every live event, but go to one or two, right? And, and when you're done, you're done. You don't have to stay there beginning to end. Um, so I want to give you a little advice on the going to those live events, especially for the introverts. Think about um, getting early, getting there early or staying late. 
because those are two times that it just is a lot easier than the core part of the program. When you're there early, you can position yourself as a helper, right? And volunteering is a great thing for an introvert to do because you're given a job and you don't have to think about where to stand, <laughs> right? Here's the bathroom, here's the coat check. Um, here, let me introduce you to so-and-so who just got here. And you have a role and it gives you that function that makes it easier for you because it's your job to do it. Um, and that that's the invitation and the permission that sometimes the introverts need in order to take those steps. So um, volunteering, getting there early, um, and then you have somebody who uh, it, you know you saw at the beginning and then you see them again and you kind of have that touch point. Um, there is pros and cons to going with an extrovert, um, but that is, a, that is a strategy that many people I know use. You just have to make sure it's an extrovert that understands how to make sure you're part of the conversation and they're not dominating it. Mm -hmm. uh, so staying late, helping people clean up, um, when things thin out and people are tired and people are like relaxed. Um, and the, the thing I will tell you that hopefully will take the anxiety away is simply this. If you can't see me, I'm holding my finger up with the number one. And one is all that you need to make an event worthwhile. One person, one contact, one potential friend that you've made that you want to follow up with. And when I find that person sometimes at an event and I'm done, I'm done. I give myself permission to go home. I love that. All it takes is one. So I think that's a great reminder for all of us, right? When you feel like you just need to network and pass out business cards or collect business cards, it really doesn't matter. It just that one really great quality over quantity. Wonderful. All right, Michelle, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with us? Um, I want everybody to know that this is accessible and it is not painful, um, but it will make such an impact in your life. And I, you know, I told you I came out of finance, so I've got a couple statistics for you. Um, social isolation is more damaging to your health and has an equal impact on your mortality than as if you smoked 15 cigarettes a day for a decade. And it is worse on your health than obesity. So basically, you can smoke and eat and drink as long as you're doing it with somebody and you'll be healthy. Um, but it also affects happiness. I mean, we think about these things in terms of our success and it matters there. Absolutely. And you have to have a clear vision to actually take advantage of the connectors, uh, faster, easier, better results, right? You need to know the results you're looking for, but sometimes those results around happiness and health, they're a little bit more amorphous, but yet there's statistics that show that as well. So if you have a good friend or a best friend at work, you are going to be happier on the job and 50% more productive, which is going to drive your success as well. So when we think about this idea of connection, it is the entirety of your life. It is not something that we step in and out of. It is a mindset that says relationships are the priority. Relationships are the priority. Well, I feel really lucky, Michelle, hearing you say this because I get to go into an office of so many best friends. So you're, I, I absolutely agree with you. Be able to be around people that you work with that you absolutely adore and respect is really a game changer. And I and can attest that the productivity, 50%, I think is a lot higher than that. All right, Michelle, let's have some fun. You ready for speed round? Okay, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love seeing so many of the comments coming in. You know, definitely, I think Vicky is talking about uh, loving the fact that volunteer tip that Michelle shelled, she said was brilliant. I agree. I mean, I think many of us can can relate to that, right? If you're given a job or task, we feel like we have a purpose and therefore the mingling isn't so difficult because we're connecting other people. So Michelle, I love it. All right, Michelle, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask you two questions, give you approximately two minutes here. And so I'm going to start with the first one because I'm sure that you have a great tip for us here and a good, good, great quote here. Michelle, tell us what's the best advice that you've actually been given and how has this impacted your life? Um, you know, I think that some of the best advice I was given was some of the first advice I was given. And it was by a woman who I saw speak 
And I was just so enthralled with her. I went after after the conference and I said, you know, can I pick your brain? Mm-hmm. And, um, and she actually agreed to have, you know, a two hour lunch with me. And I asked her, how did she go from, you know, the internal corporate security and safety to, you know, starting her own business? And she said, I just hung out my shiggle and said, open for business. And I looked at her, I'm going, I could do that. And as I said before, and so I did. And it was that just putting it out there, sharing and and speaking it made it real. There wasn't necessarily like anything of that leap that we all view that happens. Um, I'll give you one other, because this came to mind, and I don't know if this is good advice or not, but it was advice that did drive my decision making. Mm-hmm. It was, especially for those that are entrepreneurs out there or building a business, um, whether it's an internal business or an external business, follow the revenue. Follow the revenue. Very, very smart. Great. Both of those were excellent. Thank you so much. I think we can, I think it it made me think, which is why I love it, Michelle. Thank you so much. All right. Second question for you is this, Michelle, we believe that everyone has their own yes factor. Some people call it superpower. We call it yes factor. What would you say that your yes factor is? Well, my yes factor is being a connector and also enabling others to create connections. So that's why I call myself a connection creator or a catalyst, because it's not only me being the connector, but it is invoking um, and inspiring that in others. Because I think if we all connect, there will be a lot less polarization Um, There will be more diversity of thought. There will be more creativity, more innovation, more credibility, more trust, um, and more happiness, which is, you know, number one. Number one. And I think we can all agree. We need more happiness today. And we we definitely want to connect with you, Michelle. So tell us, where should we go to connect and learn more about you? Follow your journey. Well, I love to hear from people. And I want to know exactly how you found me on Winnie's show. Um, So... Best place to start is my website, which is simply Michelle Tillis Letterman, just how it's spelled in the bottom third there, dot com. From there, you can get to my LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn newsletter. I've got a YouTube channel. Um, There's a free gift pack that I give lots of stuff away. You can find the quiz. Um, And that's that's basically the hub for all of it. And I have a little special where um, I believe in buy one, gift one. So I will personalize and sign a book so that you can create connection by handing them the gift of connection. I love that. So basically you buy a book, you get a book signed, and you can give it to someone that you would love to meet, which is a great thing. Thank you so much, Michelle, for so much for being so generous with us and sharing about your book. So congratulations. I mean, four books. This is a big feat. So we, um, I'm sure your husband's thinking how many more books does she have in her. But I think as long as you have something to share, we definitely want to hear about it. So thank you, Michelle for your time and your your generosity and just being such an awesome human. And thank you everyone for being here with us. I see so many of us today. Thank you so much for being supportive of our show and our program. It means so much to me. So do me a favor. Once again, share the show all over social media, tag me on it. So I know that you do it. I know Vicky, I know Sadiq. I know so many of you do that each and every day. And I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. As a reminder, you can find full episodes of level up, on NASDAQ, KBCW, Amazon Fire, Roku, and so many other places. And of course, we're excited to share that Yes Factor, which is our new podcast with the LinkedIn Podcast Network, is available wherever you tune in to podcasts. So be well, and I can't wait to see you again this week. Take care now.